Just recently I was listening to a podcast that introduced me to the term masterful inactivity. And that's what I want to talk about today. Masterful inactivity is the act of doing nothing when you have the power to do something. One of the examples they gave was a soccer goalie during penalty shots. And studies have shown that if the goalie will stand still and not move until after the ball is kicked, he has a much better chance of blocking the kick. But because soccer is a sport of movement and a sport of action, many times the goalie will try to read the kicker's eyes and make an attempt to jump before the ball is kicked and almost every time he will lose. The art of masterful inactivity comes into play. We can see this played out in the classroom, especially when it comes down to some type of power divide between the teacher and the student. It is critical that the teacher not lose sight of who is in control of the classroom. So when a student is acting out or a student is getting angry or uh, other kinds of things that disrupt the classroom environment, it's automatically natural for the teacher to try to jump in and stop what's going on. And a lot of times that involves some type of power dynamic between the teacher and the student. And if we're not careful, we can set ourselves up to fail. Because once the power struggle has started, it's hard to come down off of that. And so things begin to escalate. The teacher gets frustrated, the student gets frustrated, things get louder. And before you know it, the student's in the hallway or the student's been sent to the office, or now you've got three students who are upset when a lot of times you can solve this problem by masterful inactivity. Let me tell you what I mean. So here's what I would recommend following the art of masterful inactivity. One of the things that I learned a long time ago is that our emotions are tied to our eyes. I shared this with a student just recently um, and they were surprised at how easily this works. So here's the premise. There's a reason why when we are angry or upset or crying that we look down. When we look down, our emotions become stronger. Whatever emotion it is that we're feeling is amplified. So if we're angry and we look down at the floor, we just get angrier. Or if we are crying and we put our head down because we're sad, we just get sadder. The idea is to get kids to look up. Because once we look up, just for a few seconds, four or five seconds, we can disconnect from the emotion that has gripped us so suddenly. And so this is what I would recommend. The next time that you sense that a student is getting upset or the next time that a student is starting to act out, just walk over and very calmly say, hey, do me a favor. Just look up at the ceiling. They'll be like, what are you talking about? Look up at the ceiling. And what I used to do in middle school was I would say, draw the shape of a guitar with your eyes. That takes four or five seconds. And by the time they're done, the emotion is gone. The outburst has never happened. And by, the, by masterful inactivity, the problem is solved before it ever begins. Give it a try. We'll talk to you next week.